Hello, my name is Luke and I'm from Merlin Archery. Today I'm going to be using my personal origin as well as a um, My Bow Wave setup and a Timber Creek Cottonmouth to explain to you how to measure draw length to the AMO industry standard. We're going to be using both wooden arrows, carbons and aluminiums to do this because you can use you can use all three to measure your AMO draw length and the reason we're doing this video is because it's one of the most frequently asked questions that we get at Merlin and it can confuse quite a lot of people. So firstly it's important to mention that this video isn't going to be showing you how to find a comfortable draw length. We're assuming in this video that you've been shooting for a little bit, you found a comfortable draw length, one that you're happy with, whether it's with a traditional bow, a recurve or a compound, something that you're happy with and now you're looking to find out what your draw length is exactly and we can do this using the AMO industry standard. Um, AMO stands for Archery Manufacturers Organisation. It's a set of standards set or used universally throughout the archery, archery industry to ensure that an individual's draw length can be measured accurately and in a repeatable manner. So the AMO draw length is measured from the throat of the grip where your hand sits to between the knocking points where the knock sits and then add an inch and three quarters and this is done whilst at full draw with a traditional bow again from where your hand sits to where the knock is strung between the two grooves whilst at full draw and with a recurve again the same from where the threat of the grip is or the pivot point of the grip to at full draw where the arrow sits within the knock and then add in an inch and three quarters so we're going to start off with the compound because it's what I use so to measure the draw length First of all, we need to find on the riser where the arrow sits, somewhere that's in line with the threat of the grip. So the easiest way to do this is to grab a tape measure. What we're going to do is we're going to measure from the threat of the grip to the string, which is seven and a half inches. We're then going to measure from the string back to the riser. And that puts the threat of the grip at the back of the back berger hole so that when I measure my draw length using the eastern measuring arrow we're going to take the measurement from the back of the back berger hole and then add an inch and three quarters. We add an inch and three quarters because it gives us an approximate safe arrow length to be using with this setup. Now the same thing can be done with a traditional bow. Again the easiest way to do it is if you measure from the throat of the grip where the hand sits to the string using a tape measure and for that we get seven and six eighths. So I've got some masking tape on the bow already, just there. So then we're going to measure seven and six eighths from the string back to the riser. And we're going to put a little mark. So that little mark that I've made there tells us where the threat of the grip is in relation to the riser so that when we're measuring at full draw we can get an accurate measurement instead of guessing where the throat of the grip is. The same can also be done on a recurve. Most times the bracing height on a recurve is slightly higher. So we're going to measure what we want to measure from the throat of the grip. On this one we've got eight and a quarter inches. So we're going to measure again back from the string to the riser to find where the throat of the grip is in relation on the riser. So eight and a quarter inches puts us in line with the middle of the berger hole. So for in this example, we're going to be measuring when we come to full draw to the middle of this berger hole where your pressure button would go. So now that we've found where the threat of the grip corresponds to in relation to the riser, it's the back of the berger hole on the compound. On the recurve, it's the middle of the berger hole. Again, that's where the plunger button would sit. And then on our cotton mouth, I've made a mark on the shelf which is in line directly with the um, threat of the grip. We're going to start with my personal favourite and my own origin. To do this, I'm going to be using the Eastern measuring stick and I'm also going to be using a can't fire release aid for health and safety purposes. If you don't have access to one of these, you can use a trigger, but be very careful and keep your thumb away from the button at all times. So I'm going to knock the Eastern measuring stick as you would your own arrow. As you would with your own release aid, I'm going to hook it in through the D-loop and then I'm going to come to full draw. 
Once I'm at full draw, we can measure to the back of the back berger hole, and then that will give us my draw length once I add an inch and three quarters, which again will give us an approximate safe arrow length. All right, so now we're gonna do the same with our Mybo uh, recurve setup. Again, we don't need to use the campfire release aid on this one, but we are gonna use the Easter measuring stick. And instead of doing it once, like we did with the compounds, we're gonna measure three times to get the most accurate measurement possible. I'm gonna draw up to my, I'm gonna draw up to my anchor point, hold it for a minute, or hold it for a second or two, come down, relax, come back up, come back down, and then come back up once more time. And then what this will allow us to do is it will give us the average draw length for myself with this bow. And then we can take that, we can take the average, we can add an inch and three quarters, and again, that will give us our AMO draw length. All right, so we're gonna do the same again, once more, with the cotton mouth. Again, as I said earlier, you can use one of your wooden arrows and get a friend to mark on the arrow um, where it comes in line with the threat of the grip. But because we have the Eastern measuring tool, we're gonna to use that. Use it the same as you would on any other bow or on your own bow. Gonna knock it between the two knocking points and you're gonna to come to full jaw. And then you're gonna come down, relax, give it a few seconds, come back up. And then do the same once more time. Again, by doing it three times, it allows us to take an average. And then from there, we can work out what your AMO draw length is from taking the measurement to the line that we've made on this bow and then add in an inch and three quarters. So whilst we're on the topic of AMO draw length, it's worth mentioning AMO arrow length. It's something that you'll see on our website and it's something that you'll see across the internet and across other archery uh, websites and forums. So when you're buying a set of arrows from ourselves, uh, if you want them pre-made or if you want them cut to a specific length, then we're gonna ask you for your AMO arrow length. So the AMO arrow length is measured from the throat of the knock where the string sits to the end of the shaft. So it's not measured to the point and it's not measured to the end and it's not measured from carbon to carbon. It's measured from the throat of the knock to the end of the shaft. So that's all from me guys. I hope to have helped in some way. I hope you can go away from this video and you can go measure your draw length as accurately as possible using the AMO standards. And then in future, you're not gonna be so confused when it comes to trying to find the right arrow length and trying to find the bow with the right draw length for you. Um, please stay tuned. Check into season four more often and we'll see you shortly.